after episode three, the meltdown was in the refuse, but in episode four, the meltdown was in the sky, and we seen dragons die. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment here to review House of the Dragon, season two, episode four. This one is called The Red Dragon and the Gold, and finally, in my opinion, in season two, we got a pretty decent episode. Yeah, we got a pretty decent episode. We got action. We got a battle on the front lines. We got something. Now, I've actually seen a lot of hate for this episode in our comment section saying the writing was horrendous this episode. I mean, what's set the writing apart from the first three? There's people defending the first three but burying this one. I'm not going to say this was a stone cold classic, but at least something happened. It wasn't just people moping around their castles and landings and all that stuff. There was a battle. They are to be one. Yeah, it's strange. We've been bashing the first three episodes of this season. And then a lot of people were bashing this episode, even though we think this episode was a step in the right direction. Look, was the writing great? No. Was the dialogue great? No. But there was stuff happening. It was a little bit interesting. We actually got to see Dragon's Fight, which felt like for real for the first time in this season. We got to see the King, King Aegon, go into battle. Uh, we got to see Christian Cole trying to take down some tower. Uh, we got Aemon as well, just flying about and do doing what he does. Okay, there were some parts that dragged, especially the Daemon parts. I know that Daemon is a lot of people's favourite character, but I don't know, his story arc right now is boring the hell out of me. I don't think it's, it's good. He's just... I don't, I don't like him. At least we didn't see him in the nude this episode, uh, cradling like a little bitch. I mean, he, That's Eamon, not Damon. Eamon? Oh, aye, Damon. Aye. Well, I mean, no, I think the same goes for him, though, as well. I don't think his story's going anything particularly... No, but hold on, let's actually talk about Damon. All this hallucination. Shit. I mean, they've got nothing for the the actor, actress, that played the young Raniera. So it's like, we're going to have to give you... Th Her? She's done. Her shelf life's over. It's simply just flashbacks now. Well, no shit. Aye. So, it just feel, it feels like this is just forced to keep her on a paycheck. Keep her getting a paycheck. But as for Damon, man, oh, he's in the Howling Halls or whatever it's bloody called with a bunch of jobbers with no names talking to people that have got, like, speech impediments. Some would say Fog Entertainment. Some would say this guy was about 15. You should put a pillow over your grandsire's face. Who does Damon think he is? I love my grandsire. I would never do that. Well, uh, you should you, you should put his men to war while he still breathes. Yes. Like, uh, uh, fuck Damon. Who, who is he to turn up at Harrenhal and, and, su one. and suggest that, you know what? We should just kill <laughs> the, the leader here because he's in his deathbed. Yeah, how would da how would Damon like that if someone went up to Viserys and just planted a you know a, a pill over his head? I'm surprised Damon wasn't the one to do it. To be honest, yeah, Damon definitely would have. I mean, it would, but that's, that's the lines here. Damon just thinks he can get away with it. I mean, he, he buried the king about four hundred times in his tenure. Is it really a surprise that he's going to these bunch of no-names and burying them to their face? No, even when he's sitting around the table, the guy's like mid conversation, and he's like, "Who are you?" I mean, you're supposed to be getting these guys support, and, and, and he's like just burying them to his face. And then he's imagining his daughter as one of like the the, the cup bearers. No, you're old, Dave. The guy sucks. That was his ex-wife. Daughter, ex-wife. Well, you know what? It looked like his daughter to me. Does it really matter if it's his ex-wife or daughter? He imagined someday it wasn't who it was. That was his oh, enlighten us. What, what was the name of his ex-wife then? Since you know it all. Oh, hold on, you're asking. That. She's been dead for eight episodes, how would I know that? That's why I thought it was his daughter. No. Alright, anyway, let's move away from Damon, right, because he sucked. Matt Smith doesn't do a good job for me. I've never rated Matt Smith. Can See tell anybody you. who was a Doctor Who? Is that what he was? I was Doctor Who. Can they tell you that? Didn't they know that? Well, name me a good Doctor Who. Exactly. I don't know Doctor Who, I don't know Matt Smith. Well, Matt Smith, I've seen a few things he's been in, but anyway, I don't like Damon. I'll bury him every time we discuss the show. I mean, everything apart from him I thought was alright this episode. Now that we've wrapped up Damon Targaryen and how shit Matt Smith is, we can get into the juicy part of the episode. But before we do, before we talk about the big dragon fight and the big major character death, for me, 14 episodes in and there's still way too many of these cast members, too many of these characters that I just do not have a clue who they are. I feel like there's so many 
meaningless scenes in House of Dragon where you will see somebody like walk in to speak to Alison or speak to uh, Raniera and they will just go in and they will address her, my grace, my grace this. And the dialogue is just cookie cutter, it's boring, it doesn't like grab you, it doesn't pull you in, it, it doesn't get your attention, it's just like these really forgetful scenes, these really forgetful dialogue scenes where it's almost like they're just doing it to give the character screen time, not necessarily that it adds anything to the episode or to the story. I feel like with Game of Thrones, pretty much every scene added something, but in House of Dragon, it's almost like they're just having scenes for the sake of it. We know Alice in Hightower can't be out on the fields fighting, so therefore we'll, we'll just like make up these excuses for people to visit her and sit down and bow down to her and say, yes, my grace, yes, my queen. I, I, for me, I, I don't like that part of House of the Dragon. Plus, like I said, 14 episodes in, still barely know any of these people's names. Now, I'm, I'm not saying by 14 episodes in Game of Thrones that I knew everyone's name, but I at least recognised the face. And if I didn't know the name, I would know like, what house they were a part of, or, or whose allies they were, or, like, you know, how high up, or what kind of position they held. You, you knew who they were without ne not necessarily knowing their name, but in, in House of the Dragon, it's like, you get all these scenes with just, like, these random people speaking to Alison, speaking to Raniera, and it's like a who's who of nobodies, and I think they've done a really poor job of introducing all these characters and considering it's been like this sort of civil war between the one family you would imagine that it would be easier although maybe because it's pretty much had the one setting for the entire season one and maybe because it is the one big family then it's actually harder to differentiate between the characters I don't know but that, that bothers me what bothers me is we have got two war councils and I'm not going to complain too much about the King's Landing one. I think they're alright. I would probably rate their table about a 5 out of 10. It's It gets through. But see, Ranieras, what's going on? I mean, they've got about quadruple the members, but I, I know barely anyone. I mean, you've got Jace running things this episode. Wait, I mean, Corley's is just hanging around like a bad smell. And then you've just got all these people who I, who I don't even have a clue who, they, what house, what, what their names are, initials, nothing. Just compare the council meetings in Game of Thrones season one and two to House of the Dragon season one and two. I mean, it is night and day. No, it's night and day. Where's Littlefinger in this? Where's fairies? No, but it's even something like The Wall. You can remember people at The Wall. It's like, these are actually people you're seeing every episode discussing war tactics, and it's like, what's the point of even being there? Yeah, it's a full table, but it may as well be empty. All right, so let's get into the good part then. So we have Christian Cole leading his army, and he's going to do it in the day, even though he gets recommended not to do that by Alicent's brother, because is it Gwen? Sir, Is it Gwen Hightower? I think his name's Gwen. 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 He says it's suicidal, we can't do it. Christian Cole goes, nah, they won't be expecting it. But it turns out that they are expecting it. Raniera returns. She tells everyone where she was. She was at King's Landing. They're all upset, but she says, I had to do it. I had to know that ending 80 years of peace is going to be worth it. I had to know that there was no other way we could come to a, a, a civil, peaceful conclusion here. So... They just seem to ride the Raniera Targaryen gravy train here. They just How ridiculous to... is that though? She knows peace can't be made and war is inevitable. And Alicent just lets her walk out of King's Landing when it could be so prevented. Could have been prevented. And so they want to get a dragon out there. Raniera said she's going to go. Jace says, nah, you can't go. I will go. But she kind of like shuts him down and says, nah, you're too inexperienced. And then Rainey's go says, I'll go, I'll go, because we need a strong woman here, you know, feminism running wild. Old feminism. So she's going to go, she does fly out, she sees Christian Cole's army, and all of a sudden there's fiery breath coming down on Cole's army. And it's almost like Christian Cole planned on this, because obviously he knew he had Eamon in the background. But, I mean, he, he pretty much did sacrifice a bunch of his men here. 
he did, but here sacrifices have to be made and more. You know, there's always that expression that the lions are led by donkeys and is Sir Christian Cole a donkey? I'm not too sure. Never heard of that? No. That's, that's Elaborate. What, it's an old war thing. The generals are the donkeys, but the, the lions on the front line are the uh what's he what do you call recruits? And the privates. Why would lions follow donkeys? That's just that's the same. That's I don't fucking know what's the same. Yeah, so Rainey's is is lighting everyone up, literally, you know, they're on fire, fiery breath, whoa, dragons, whoa. Uh, and then we got Cole, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's expecting Eamon, but there is no Eamon. Eamon's no coming. And at this point, I guess, maybe Cole's thinking he's been betrayed, perhaps, or is Eamon too busy naked again, being cradled by some woman that's twice his age? We don't know, but Eamon's no there. But there is... One Targaryen there, and it just feels weird when you've got these battles going on, but you're talking about Targaryen here, Targaryen there. Everyone's a Targaryen. Yeah, and as for the battle, right, I mean, it was a decent so scene. We, yeah, we get Aegon arriving drunk. Alison basically told him before that you're kind of a shit king and you just need to sit there and listen. So I think he's took that the wrong way. He's took that to heart. He wants to prove that he can be a good king. He thinks that nobody on the council meetings is shedding their information they're not really keeping him informed with the the battle lines and the tactics i guess they should be but maybe he's just not respected so he, he, i guess he thinks that he can go here and earn respect problem is his dragon shit it's like this little tiny thing how can you be the king but have like the shit as dragon it makes no sense to me it makes no sense to you it makes no sense to me I called it at the time, but again, it was a drunk, foolishness decision from the big man. Aegon. Yeah, 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 I know it's Aegon. I'm just calling him the big man. Try and put him over, because he can be a big man, but his dragon can't be a I mean, big he's dragon. He's actually pretty small. He is, but here, he needs to... Let's just put a bit of respect on the guy's name, right? When Joffrey have did this... No. Joffrey's pants would have fell down his arse. That's what would have happened. As for the scene... I thought it was a bit of a clusterfuck, but I don't know how to film it. Like, how can you actually film this scene? I, I think you were getting a bit confused about whose dragons what. Like, they were smashing into each other, there was flames, there was everything. Uh, it was easy to tell. Like, there's a small dragon, a medium dragon, and a large dragon, so... Yeah, one, one, but two, three, it, it's you know, like, it's... there was loads of flames, and it's like, how's no one getting burned? And I, I googled it, and it's apparently there's something in the Targaryen blood that they can withstand a little amount of flames. Work out on it. Well, here, that was the gimmick in Game of Thrones, isn't it? Well, I don't know, I haven't got... Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah you're right. Sure, so... Daenerys says uh, you were no real dragon. Fire cannot kill a dragon. So, but, yeah, but how much can you withstand, though, is the question. That Targaryen blood must be worth a lot if you can withstand all this flame stuff. You could just bottle that up and it'd be worth more than gold. True, but it's like, see this scene? I, I feel like, so like sword scenes can be done... Like with reality, I think once you've seen these dragons fight, it's like how often can you keep repeating it? I get well. I think that's why we haven't seen it happen often, and I, I don't think it's something we're going to see often. I, I can't imagine we're going to be getting every episode dragons fighting because that would get old quick. Like you said, there's only so many different like movements and things they can do. Uh, where, you know, it's two dragons flying in the sky, biting and, and spitting fire at each other at the end of the day. There's only so many ways you can, like, try and spin that and, and create unique scenes, unique fight scenes with dragons. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> you look at Rocky taking on Apollo Creed and they go 15 rounds. Would you really want to see two dragons go 15 rounds? No, it'd be fairly repetitive. One would it? probably be enough. Yeah, they'd probably run out of flames. Probably would. Anyway, right, so it looks like Rhaenys is going to win. She's beaten the King's arse, but then Aemon finally gets there. He, I don't know what he was waiting on, but he comes in. His dragon's fucking huge, and essentially he is... Looks like he's winning, but then Rhaenyra fights back, and it looks like she's got the upper hand. She tries to fly away, but then it was uh, Fagar and Aemon... They just like come out of nowhere and take a big chunk out of uh, Melee's, I believe that's the dragon that Rainey's has got, and Melee's just kind of dies. I mean, it gets a big chunk taken out of his neck, and I guess it just fucking head kind of doesn't fall off, but uh, when you get your neck bitten, it kind of 
I mean, we, we you're dead. There's too much blood. Aye. Even for dragons, there's too much blood. And then we see Melee's just like falling from the sky, and then you get this like weird like uh, footage of Rainey's who's like attached to Melee's, and she's just like falling backwards. It looked a bit cheap. Yeah, the CGI did look cheap, and I think in a show, I think like the other scenes though, that they had on the dragons, it looked good. So it's weird that the, the, the scene where she actually dies looked incredibly cheap. You think it'd be easier to film? Yeah, it's literally just falling back. So yeah, she hits the deck, and you have to assume from this height that she is probably dead. Another guy that hit the deck though was Aegon. Where is he? Well, Christian Cole gets on his horse and trots after him to try and find him. When he gets to the wreckage, though, Aemond is already there, and Aemond is looking in at um, Aegon, Aegon and his dragon, and it doesn't look good. Christian Cole runs over and he falls to one knee. So has the king been killed here? It's not Christian Cole's fault anyway. The king did this on his own accord, so there's no one's to blame. But how would this affect the, the war if Aegon is dead? Do they just simply go with the next heir to Aegon? Or, or would that seriously weaken Team Green's claim to the throne? I think it would weaken their claim. Uh, a lot of talk that Aemond would get the throne. and I mean, I, I'd welcome that. I would welcome him more than Aegon. But Aegon's got kids, is he not? Yeah, but I think he would... Well, one of them I, died, I, like... I think he would get the throne until they are of age, which would give you a bit more. Well, they did cut the head off his son. Oh, yeah, that one, that one can't happen. But is he dead? No. Apparently in the book, spoiler alert, he just lives through it, but he's got metal armour burned into him. However, that's going to work. So, but, I mean, what's... Is Sir Christian Cole going to be dealt punishment? Is, is Alison going to be pissed at him, even though it wasn't his fault? Was there a plan that essentially put this shitstorm in motion? Did put it in motion. Anyway, let's give a rating. Uh, I'll give it a... I'm going to get a 7. I thought it was easily the best episode so far of Season 2. Still don't think it was great. The first half dragged for me, but the second half was good. I liked the second half. Yeah, but I, I, I wonder what people's, like, fundamentally wrong writing. That's what people are labelling this as. Like, what was so bad about it, the writing-wise? Well, I mean, we can break it down. We can look at it after we give it another rewatch. So, uh, yeah, we'll... <laughs> We'll, we'll discuss the writing a little bit more during the week, but for right now, from what I've seen, in terms of just an episode, if you don't really break it down too much and you just look at it and go, was it an exciting episode? Did stuff happen? For me, the answer to that is yes, and it was uh, a lot more happened in this episode. I think more happened in this episode. Uh, yeah, the second half of this episode was more eventful than the first three and a half episodes of this season. It is what it is, and I'm not necessarily a big action fan. I, I don't need, I like dialogue, I don't need things to be quick paced, but this season has been so, so boring. So yeah, I, I, I think that the, the fight scenes and the actual war going on definitely helped. I think we need it like a, a boost in the, the arm or something. And that's what we got. A wee adrenaline shot into the arm. Anyway, I'll give it a seven as well. All the seven, 77, seven out of 10. Till next time, peace.